Hello friends. So, um, we were discussing about the biological treatment of wastewater in the previous lecture. The biological treatment essentially the uh, are used in the secondary treatment processes where our major objective is the removal of organic matter. So, in this particular lecture we are going to talk about uh, some of the basic aspects which are essential to understand how the biological treatment process works. So, uh, we will be basically talking about the microbial growth and its kinetics and it is very important to understand this in order to design the biological treatment systems. Eventually, the biological treatment systems are governed by the ability and actions of microorganisms to decompose and degrade the uh, target organic contaminants. So, how they are going to degrade or decompose a specific type of contaminant or a type of particular type of organic matter will depend on certain uh, inherent properties of the microbial species which is involved in that degradation or decomposition process and essentially uh, it will be basically how many cells are present at what rate they can uh, degrade or decompose the organic matter, uh, what are the kinetics of substrate utilization or the pollutant degradation, what is the kinetics of biomass growth. So, all these things are very essential in order to understand that how much contact time should be given, what time is enough. So, that will eventually help us in sizing the reactor, otherwise how would we know what flow rate is good, whether we should keep bacteria in contact with the water for half an hour or 2 hour or 4 hour. So, all those things will eventually govern by the its uh, kinetics of the micro uh, microbial processes. So, that is what we are going to discuss in this particular lecture. To begin with the uh, microbial growth if we see essentially is the process where the uh, micro whatsoever microbial cells are present they utilize the food which is essentially carbon source. So, they utilize the food and the presence of all the essential nutrients and appropriate physiological conditions. So, they have to have a suitable temperature, they have to have a suitable pH range, they have to have a uh, all the essential nutrients. So, when all these things are present, when there are all the essential nutrients are present, the conditions are favorable, the environmental conditions including temperature, pH or other physiological conditions are favorable and there is the source of food and energy is available in the system, then microorganisms utilize that and they grow. So, how they grow? It is not the growth in size as we are a small kid and then slowly, slowly, slowly growing to the adults and uh, that way. The microbial growth essentially refers to the uh, multiplication or like the microbes typically multiply. So, uh, how their, their cells are multiplying, ok. So, how many number of cells are increasing in a unit time? So, it is essentially the number of viable cells instead of uh, the size of the cell or those kind of uh, things. So, when we say the microbial growth, we are essentially talking about the, the increase in the number of microbial uh, cells. Okay. So, this growth requirement may vary from the species to species. Some species will have a particular preference for a organic matter, some may not work on that particular type of organic matter. Some species works in a higher temperature range as we discussed uh, in the last class also that there are species uh, which works thermophilic which works at a higher temperature, mesophilic which works at a moderate temperature, then psychrophilic which works at a lower temperature. Similarly, we have aerobic species, anaerobic species depending on the presence of oxygen or the absence of oxygen. We have autotrophs, chemotrophs. So, what uh, like from where they are getting the energy, what is the source of carbon for them. So, all those things essentially suggest that the different species or different type of microorganisms, different class of microorganisms may essentially have different requirements for the growth. 
ok and maintaining the appropriate quantity of microorganisms or rather we can say the viable microbial cells or the active microbial mass is very important is very essential for the biological treatment of wastewater. Why it is essential? Because this treatment is eventually being attained by the action of microorganisms. So, we have to have uh, we have to kind of maintain a good healthy microbial consortia in the reactor in the system. So, that there are enough number of active uh, microbial cells are present in order to take part in the decomposition or degradation process. Now, if we see as we are discussing the requirements for growth, so the uh, there are different type of requirement, there are nutritional requirement. So, uh, one needs a carbon source, microorganisms need a carbon source for metabolism and synthesis of new cell. Now, this will depend on the type of nature, um, obviously again depend on type and nature of the microbes, what kind of uh, source they are using. So, like uh, whether they are autotrophs or they are heterotrophs, if they are autotrophs or whether they are photo autotrophs using sunlight or chemo autotrophs carbon. So, kind of for energy, then uh, whether they are using organic car carbon, organic compounds or uh, CO. So, at that kind of like the different composition, different things can be made of. So, uh, what are their requirement can actually be derived from that. Then there are requirement of minerals. So, there are certain principal minerals, main minerals one needs uh, of course, NPK is required then sulfur is needed, magnesium, calcium, iron, sodium, chlorine. So, all these things are the principal elements which are essential for the uh, microbial growth, where are there are certain trace elements which are also needed in a very small quantities zinc, manganese, uh, molybdenum, cobalt, nickel, copper. So, all those things uh, these kind of trace elements are needed and then the major nutrients are needed. So, we can call that um, like macro and micronutrients as well at times. Then uh, there is a carbon nitrogen and phosphorus ratio is needed. So, there has to be an appropriate C n p ratio ok. So, uh, COD essentially is the reflective of total organic carbon. So, that way we can say that COD n and p ratio is essential. So, for aerobic one needs uh, 100 is to 10 is to 1 to 5 while for anaerobic 350 is to 5 is to 1 is the one which essence which generally or broadly is recommended. The nutrient requirement is lower for anaerobic processes due to the lower growth rate of microorganisms. So, in anaerobic the rate of growth of microorganism is essentially very low as opposed to the aerobic processes. So, that is why the requirement of nutrient is also very low. You can see here it is 100 versus 10 versus uh, 1 to 5 whereas, this is 350 is to 5 is to 1. So, obviously, the nutrient requirement is lower in the anaerobic uh, processes because of the lower growth rates. There is carbon and energy sources ok. So, uh, for carbon source uh, whether it is using uh, carbon dioxide as a carbon source or organic compound. So, if it is using organic com compound it is uh, heterotrophs carbon dioxide uh, from uh, that way it is autotrophs it is using from the light. So, then it is photo autotrophs if it is using from the chemical compounds it becomes chemo autotrophs and similarly we will have photo heterotrophs and chemo heterotrophs depending on what energy source and what carbon source the uh, microbial consortia or the elements are using. So, that is about the need of the carbon source. Then there is uh, temperature requirements ok. So, temperature controls the rate of biochemical reactions we have discussed this earlier as well. So, or typical rate of biochemical reactions would be governed by temperature and various other physiological parameters, but temperature is one very important parameter in that. Further, it also sort of controls the integrity of protein structures. At high uh, temperatures, there is disintegration of these protein structures leading to like this protein gets denatured 
and leading to sort of uh, cells become dead because when the protein or uh, exocellular protein or intracellular protein becomes denatured cells cannot survive th that way. So, uh, that way temperature controls and in overall it affects the enzymatic activities because of the uh, controlling the rate of biochemical uh, reactions and controlling the uh, sort of existence or the status of protein structures or various other that way. So, enzyme activities increase typically with increasing temperature. So, uh, for a given set of uh, Consu microbial consortia, if we increase the temperature, normally what is uh, seen is that they are, they become more active, their enzymatic activities increases and at higher temperature the biochemical reaction rate also increases and that leads to the higher reaction rates eventually. However, it is not just one way process because as we were saying that it all uh, the temperature also sort of controls the integrity of the protein structures. So, when the temperature becomes too high, it can kill the microorganisms by denaturing enzymes okay, or by inhibiting the transport carrier molecules or by change in the membrane integrity. So, uh, these things gets affected with the temperature and as a result at higher temperature too high a temperature it could actually be uh, sort of microbes can uh, not survive or could actually become dead as well. So, that way if you see uh, there is a minimum temperature below which you would not see any microbial activities or any growth rate. So, if this is scale is of for growth rate, so below this temperature there is no growth rate. So, there has to has there have to have a minimum temperature at which the microbes can grow. Okay. Then there is a maximum temperature above which again you will not see any growth rate because the uh, higher at that higher temperature it can kill the microorganism. So, you will not see rather growth that way okay. or it can denature the enzymes or inhibit the protein these things. So, there are various ways through which the growth is prevented above certain temperatures. In between that if you increase the temperature the growth rate is likely to increase and it will be increasing to a optimum value and that temperature is actually the optimum temperature at which the microbial growth rate is the maximum. So, we can attain a temperature at which the microbial growth rate is maximum. So, that becomes our optimum temperature. and either we we, move, we may move either side of the optimum temperature and what we will observe that growth rate is decreasing because once you go above the optimum temperature again this inhibition effects starts more prevailing and that leads to the decrease in the microbial growth rate beyond this optimum temperature and if we move towards the lower temperature again the rate of biochemical reaction decreases and we will see the net decrease in the bio uh, mass growth as well, growth rate as well. So, there is a optimum temperature which maintains. So, this way the various microbial species typically so this characteristic temperature dependence okay, and uh, what typically we call they have their own cardinal temperatures which is minimal temperature, maximum temperature and optimal growth temperatures. Okay. So, this is the minimal temperature, optimum temperature and maximum temperature that way three different temperature characteristics are there which defines how the growth will be uh, under certain ranges. So, if you are at optimum temperature the growth is likely to be the highest, if you are at minimum uh, lower than uh, optimum temperature at uh, towards minimum we can have attain a growth at to the minimum and below which there would not be any growth. Similarly, uh, over and above maximum there would not be any growth. Okay. So, that way we can see the uh, growth pattern dependency on the temperature. Now, uh, if we see the minimal maximum and optimal growth temperatures for different type of species. So, as uh, 
we discussed earlier three different type of species the psychrophilic one which works at a lower range. So, you can see that maybe around minus 5 degree or so is typically the uh, minimal temperature for them 20 degrees the maximum temperature. So, below 20, uh, after 20 they would not see much of these things and around 10 12 degrees the optimum temperature for psychrophilix. For mesophilix uh, it is like 14 15 degrees the minimum and then uh, close to 45 is the maximum and 37 38 degree is normally the optimum temperature for the mesophilic group. The mesophilic groups are the one which are most widely used because uh, our uh, normal ambience temperature relies in this range. So, we will see that our temperature in the winters goes as, as low as maybe 7, 8 somewhere here, but in most cases or in the water that way it remains above 12, 15 and in winter uh, in summer uh, sorry in winters and in summer it goes as high as 45 or those that ranges. So, we get a large range for the large part of the year we get a temperature suitable to this mesophilic range and that is why in the um, in the wastewater treatment processes or those kind of si systems we normally use mesophilic group of the microorganisms okay, because their temperature range is what uh, is suitable for us. If we go for other type of microorganisms let us say if we go for thermophilics which have a optimum temperature somewhere close to 66, 67 degree Celsius. So, we will have to provide a heating mechanism for the water which is which is going to be quite energy intensive. Okay. So, uh, that is why we avoid the other uh, uh, other species other uh, species from the other uh, temperature ranges and normally stick to the mesophilic range. In the thermophilic though you can see that uh, there are the minimum minimal temperature is around uh, 42, 43 maximum is 80 and optimum somewhere as we are saying that uh, 65 to 70 and then there are a hypothermophilic range hyperthermophilic range which works at a even higher temperature where it can sustain close to the uh, 95 or 100 degree for optimum and uh, maximum it can sustain at, at around 100, 700, 8 degrees. So, these are the different classes based on the temperature and their ranges of the temperature for minimal, maximum and optimal uh, growth temperatures. Okay. And, uh, mesophilic are the ones which are typically used and that is why we get the ideal performances or best performances when our temperature is approaching 35-37 degrees Celsius because that is what is the optimal temperature for majority of these species falling under the mesophilic category or mesophilic range. So, that is about temperature then uh, there are various other uh, requirements for microbial growth. Okay there is requirement of pH. So, uh, whether it is uh, neutrophilic neutrophils. So, neutrophils are the one which actually uh, pretty narrow range okay. they uh, works best in the neutral range of the pH. Okay. So, around 6.5 to 7.8 or that is the typical range for neutrophils or uh, so the range is pretty narrow. Then there are uh, acidophils which works in the acidic ranges which works better or which has a higher growth uh, rate in the acidic ranges. And similarly, we have uh, alkalinophils uh, al which actually works better in the uh, basic range or alkaline ranges. So, when your pH is uh, higher than the neutral pH you will see this kind of species prevailing and they have the higher growth rate when your pH is lower than the uh, neutral pH or in the acidic range the acidophiles are the one which actually uh, survives or which grows better okay. uh, while under the neutral pH conditions it is the neutrophiles. Then we have uh, discussed in the previous lecture also there is requirement of oxygen. So, based on the, uh, that will again depend on whether what kind of species it is whether it is aerobic species, anaerobic species, facultative species. 
So, for aerobic the uh, oxygen is the electron acceptor. So, it is very essential uh, for the aerobic systems to have oxygen or particularly the dissolved oxygen kind of things present because that is what will uh, act as an electron acceptor and eventually uh, kind of uh, uh, in the process of degradation of uh, or in the process of oxidation of the organic matter that is what will be needed. So, in the aerobic we need oxygen sufficient amount of dissolved oxygen should, should be present. Uh, oxygen being a nutrient it is not that the level of oxygen will only govern the rate of reaction, but there has to be adequate amount of oxygen present in the system. In the anaerobic system oxygen is not needed in fact, for obligate anaerobes oxygen becomes toxic. Okay. So, this uh, should be devoid of presence of the oxygen whereas, there are facultative ones which can um, may or may not need oxygen it, it does not matter actually even if there is oxygen. So, they may use oxygen as an electron acceptor or if there is uh, no oxygen present in the system they can look for the alternate electron acceptor. So, they can survive both in presence and absence of oxygen whereas, obligate anaerobes cannot survive in the presence of oxygen and aerobic ones need oxygen for their survival or the obligate anaerobic ones particularly. Then there are uh, certain other requirements like what is the osmotic pressure depending on the kind of species, hydrostatic pressure. So, how much hydro hydrostatic pressure uh, one can leave. So, there are uh, species which relies in the deep sea can sustain very can sustain like significant hydrostatic pressure, but most of the microbial species uh, actually in the upper layer of water if you put them deep down they probably they are not there is deficiency might be deficiency of oxygen might be inability to sustain the hydrostatic pressure or those kind of thing might lead to the uh, uh, sort of decay of those species and the growth will be affected. They probably cannot proliferate and cannot survive at the uh, such hydrostatic pressures. Then there is uh, associations and biofilm. So, how the microbes are getting associated whether they are forming any biofilm or not, whether the system is attached growth system or suspended growth system. So, this attached growth system versus suspended growth system again is a uh, will depend on the type of species and uh, it is not like certain species can grow in only suspended growth system. They, most of the species can grow either in a suspended growth system or attached growth system uh, or in both in fact. So, uh, that chances are there. What essentially the attached growth system and suspended growth system means is that in a suspended growth system we have let us say water the microbes are suspended in the water. So, they do not actually uh, they are not attached to any particular medium. So, if you are having let us say glass of water and the microbes growth. So, there might be some growth onto the surface of the glass which is kind of attached system because they are attached to the surface of the glass, but in the water medium also there would be lot of microorganisms present. So, they are the suspended they remain in the suspended in the water and uh, this kind of when they grow within this suspended medium this kind of growth is called suspended growth systems when the microbes are multiplying and in the when they are in the suspension in the water actually they are not attached to anything. And then there is attached growth system. So, we may see that we have a pipe with lot of packing materials gravels boulders those kind of things. So, those kind of filters are there and when you are passing water from this one. So, the growth take place attached to certain surfaces. Now, this could be the uh, any, any sort of media ok. There are uh, there are various different types of media which are used these days for attached growth system. So, one can have any those kind of media, but whatsoever is the media that is secondary thing there has to be has a surface on which the biomass gets attached and then growth. Okay. So, that is what is referred typically as attached growth system. So, we have suspended growth system, we have attached growth system. This is very important because uh, many of our uh, 
many of our uh, treatment processes works on either of these principles. So, like activated sludge process where uh, we typically have uh, water and then aerator. So, there the microbes remains in the suspension they do not get attached to anything and then we have trickling filter where there is a filter media or packing media is there and the water trickles on them. So, the here whatsoever microbial growth is there it actually gets attached to uh, the media available here and then grows. So, which one is the better whether attached growth system or suspended growth system again uh, it has to be basically uh, sort of evaluation of pros and cons of both the system. Okay. So, uh, particularly if we are talking about uh, biological wastewater treatment system, so there are two aspects. Okay. One aspect what what is our prime objective or what is our prime motto is to degrade or decompose the substance degrade the pollutant. Now, this pollutant degradation which is actually the substrate for the bacteria. So, our motto is to degrade the substrate and whatsoever is the rate of substrate degradation, however high rate of substrate degradation it is better for the contaminant removal. So, we want a high rate of substrate removal. Now, that is one aspect. So, we need high rate of substrate removal and the second aspect is that since this removal or this degradation is being done by the microorganism. So, we need significant quantity of microorganisms as well. So, that means we need high growth rate of microorganism. So, that there are enough microorganisms growing, there are enough new viable cells are forming in the system. So, that substrate gets quickly utilized. So, there are these two aspects. Now, this point here is that attached growth system provides a higher growth rate. Bacteria actually like to grow when they are attached to certain medium. So, attached growth system typically has higher growth rate but the substrate utilization or the rate at which the substrate is removed in attached growth system is slower. As opposed to the suspended growth system, the net growth in the suspended growth system is smaller that is primarily for two reasons. One is uh, in attached growth system when the microbes are attached to a, let us say certain medium. So, when the flow takes place you would not see that microbes too much of uh, bacteria getting washed out from the system. Okay. So, because bacteria or microorganisms are attached to a medium and they remain attached with that medium. So, this wash out thing is prevented and what you get out of from uh, out of this system is predominantly water and most of the biomass retains in the system. But in case of suspended growth system when things are in the suspension and then when you take this water out of reactor when water flows since microorganisms are in the suspension. So, they also flows along with the water. So, there is lot of biomass wash out, there is lot of biomass wastage, biomass going in the effluent from the suspended growth system and that is why the amount of biomass here is less. Whereas, amount of biomass here is more, but at the same time attached growth system let us say this is our surface and then there is bacteria, bacterial colonies are attached to this and then they will form another layer on that, they might form another layer on that. So, kind of the biofilm formation that takes place here, the biofilm formation typically takes place in attached growth system not too much in the suspended growth system. So, what happens this kind of biofilm forms which sticks better which retains the micro, uh, microorganisms in this uh, system and initially may give you a very good result, but what happens over the time that your uh, the say the mean 
your organic carbon is dissolved in the water, the substrate is dissolved in the water and for the survival for these microorganisms at the lower level layers in the biofilm, they need to get the organic matter for their food source. So, for this organic matter has to diffuse through these layers, okay. if you see this organic matter essentially needs to be diffused to these layers. Now, if it cannot diffuse to these layers, then what will happen that the microorganisms at the lower level may not get the enough food and they may become dead. So, this diffusion becomes rate limiting process because as the thickness of the biofilm increases, the uh, layers at the lower level may not get enough substrate because whatsoever substrate is coming. So, top layers utilize that and then next to the top layers and then next to top layers. So, they will probably consume the substrate and the lower layers will not get that much of substrate. So, if you see the per unit biomass the rate of substrate utilization here is low because substrate is being fed is basic uh, through one direction and uh, there is a diffusion uh, substrate diffusion limitations. Whereas, in suspended growth system if you are having microorganisms suspended in the water and then water is having that organic matter. So, each microorganisms or each of these things are actually exposed to the water where there is enough amount of substrate available. So, the rate of substrate utilization is higher in actually the suspended growth system because of the higher availability. So, this has less biomass, but high rate of substrate utilization. Whereas, this has more biomass, but lesser rate of substrate utilization. So, that is the problem there is one good thing one bad thing here one good thing one bad thing here also. So, it becomes the evaluation which system will work under which conditions in a better way and that can be sort of monitored uh, by the proper analysis. So, it is important to understand the difference between attached growth and suspended growth system in this way that your suspended growth system will have higher rate of substrate utilization, but lower biomass retention while attached growth system will have uh, higher biomass retention, but lower rate of substrate utilization and may see a mass transfer limitations for the substrate or substrate transfer limitations to the inner layers in the bio uh, in the biofilms which are being formed and creating then this there might be possibility over a large period of time that these becomes dead and once they dead they lose the grip from the surface and this entire thing can actually float ok. So, those are certain kind of issues that can come. So, these are the uh, key uh, microbial growth requirement other requirements ok. Uh, we will uh, conclude this lecture here and in the next class we will have further discussions on to the kinetics of the growth uh, biomass growth how it takes place and what are the different systems or different uh, units for the treatment of uh, wastewater. Thank you.